Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm going to show you how I use group channels or buses while mixing. We're going to be talking about bus channels today, but before we dive in, if you're ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process and really start to hone your workflow as a mixer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist. It's a simple PDF that will guide you through the entire mixing process, step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without the hassle and without the guesswork. It's completely free and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and start talking about bus faders. Now there's a couple different ways you can use buses or there's aux faders or group buses or group faders, whatever you want to call them, uh, but they all give you a little bit more control in the mixing environment. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways I use them. Now the main overarching way I use them is to send uh, a bunch of different tracks that are all kind of the same to one fader. So here I have a bunch of different loop tracks, so claps and a kick and a hi-hat, so these are all like acapella vocal sounds. All of these here are sending to my loop bus. Then I have all of my drums here, all of my drum faders, all drum tracks send to the drum bus. I have two bass tracks, a DI and an amp. Both those send to my bass bus. I have electric guitars here. All the electric guitars send to my electrics bus. And then I have two acoustic guitars, a pair of acoustic guitars here. They send to the acoustics bus. Any keys will send to my keys bus. See, even here with just one keys track, just an organ, it's still sending to my keys track. So I have that kind of extra control, just a little bit of a step in between sending to my mix bus. Two lead vocals sending to my vocal bus. And then I got two different types of background vocals here. One that's kind of sitting in the loop range with everything that's sending to BGVs. And then I have a bridge section with a different set of background vocals that's sending to a bridge BVG's bus. Now, all of these buses you can see, my different subgroups here, different subbuses, are all sending to mix A. That is another level of using buses inside the mix. And then my mix A sends to my mix bus. So that's just a subbus here in case I need to do parallel compression on the entire mix and I can put my limiter on my mix bus and keep that separate from mix bus processing. So that's, you know, uh, mix bus compression, tape bus compression, uh, console shaper, that kind of thing. And then any effects I have go right at the end of my chain here, and those also send into my mix A bus. Now let's take a step deeper here, and we'll kind of break down each section as we go through. So if we come in here and we look at our drums. So all of our drum tracks send to the drum bus, but inside of our drum tracks, I like to use buses and even a step further. So I'm using buses to put together similar tracks. So I do that in a bigger picture by sending all the drums to a drum bus, all the bass tracks to a bass bus, all the guitars to guitar buses. I do that a step further inside the drums, inside the guitars, inside the vocals, right? So inside my drums, I send my two kick tracks to a kick bus. So anything that forms one instrument overall, I like to bust together. So my kick in and my kick out work together to make the kick sound, right? So I bust those two together and I have one kick fader. That way I have control over the entire kick sound instead of having to highlight my kick in and my kick out to kind of move them. And then this way I can process them together. So my kick in, and my kick out, you can see there's no processing on either track, but they both send to my kick level. And then here I can do my limiting, my EQ, and my compression to get a good kick sound. And then my kick fader here sends to the drum bus. And then if I needed to, I could do further processing on the drum bus. So if I needed to put a drum bus compressor on there and compress the drums as a whole, I can do that. So the way we're using buses here first is to group similar tracks together. So kick faders all send to one kick bus and then all of the drum faders send to one drum bus. That way, when I wanna zoom out and take a huge look or an overall look at the mix, I can see here are my drums, here's my guitars, here's my keys, here's all my vocals. I can take a step back and instead of looking at oh, my kick's a little loud or oh, the toms don't sound quite right, I can look at the drums as a whole I can look at guitars as a whole. I can look at vocals as a whole. It gives me a little bit a little bit more control. It's a step in between, right? So I can process my kick by itself. 
and then I can do processing at the mix bus, but I can also do processing on the drums as a whole. So let's take a, a couple, couple looks here at how we can do that. So I have two lead vocals, right? And instead of doing processing on each lead vocal by itself, because they're both lead vocals, I can send them to the vocal bus and process them together. I can't take any more. Baby, I'm all the way yours. I'm holding it in. I'm holding out for your word. This can also save you processing power, right? If you have a com computer that has lower processing, lower power points, then instead of putting plugins on this channel and on the second channel here, you can send them both to one bus and just process on the bus. So instead of having six or seven plugins, we can just have three and then our effects send here. It's also good for effects send, right? I don't have to send this and this to the reverb. I can just send my vocal bus here to the reverb bus. That way there's not a bunch of different signals sending into the reverb. I just have one bus sending into the reverb here. And I do do it with just individual channels too. It's just kind of the way I work. It's the way I have my mixing template set up. I have my different buses in here. So when my mixing template comes up, I have my drum bus. I usually have a kick and snare bus. I have my bass bus, electrics bus, acoustics bus, keys, vocal, background vocal bus, okay? Those are the buses I have to start in my mixing template and I can drag tracks or add tracks to those bus faders for individual tracks. So kicks, snares, toms, basses, guitars, keys, all go in their separate folders. So that's the first way I use bus faders is to group similar tracks together and then mix them or use them as one instrument. It gives me a little bit more control in the bigger picture. The second way you can use buses is to implement top-down mixing. So all of my faders, all of my tracks, all my buses send to my mix A bus here where I do my mix bus processing and that is in right from the get-go. So like I said, my template has my buses built into it. So drums, bass, guitars, keys, and vocals, background vocals. I have those buses in from the start and all of those send into my mix A bus which has compression, tape, tape machine, and my console shaper in right from the get-go. So I'm mixing through this mix A bus from the start. So that is the other way you can use buses, is you can use them to implement top-down mixing. So I can do a little bit of mixing on my mix A fader, and then if I wanted to, I could mix over all instruments before I jumped into individual faders. So the way that would look is if before I started mixing my kick drum or my snare is if I came here to my drum bus and did a little bit of work to start on the drum bus. So for example, if after I get my mix bus compression in or my mix, mix bus processing, I could do more top-down mixing by mixing on the drum bus fader instead of individual drum tracks to start. So I could get a good drum sound before I dive into my kick and snare. So let me give you a little example of this here. So I've got my mix bus processing in and perhaps I wanna jump into my drum bus to get the drum sounding good as a package before I touch individual faders here. So we can do a little bit of drum bus compression. So we have all of our all of our bus faders are sending to our mix bus, and we can do mix bus processing there to get the entire mix sounding good from the start. And then we can zoom in just one step further. So we're going from mix bus to bus fader, so our drum bus fader. So now we're mixing the drums as a whole, and we can do this for each instrument. So we can put a little bit of drum bus compression on, and if we wanted to go a step further, maybe we throw an EQ on. So maybe we throw this vintage EQ on, and we think, oh, we could get rid of some of that mid-range to start. So instead of going in on each fader and pulling out you know, that muddy mid-range, so 400, 300 hertz there, we could do it overall on the drum bus fader.
so we can get EQ going on the drums as a whole before we dive into each individual track. That's the power of using buses like this. You can put different levels of control inside your mix. So we have all of our individual tracks, right? Our kicks, our snares, our basses, our electric guitars. All of those can send to group faders, so all of our drums can send to our drum bus, and then our drum bus can send to our mix bus. That way we have control at the individual track level, we have control over the entire instrument or the entire instrument range, so all of our guitars, all of our drums, we have control at that range, and then we have control over the entire mix at the mix bus stage. So buses give you another element of control and they give you the ability to do top-down mixing. So if you wanted to do mix bus processing from the start, if you want to do drum busing processing from the start, you can do that if you're using buses or bus faders inside your mix. A lot of talking in this video today, but I hope that was helpful for you. And like I said at the start of the video, if you're ready to take your mixes to the next level and start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you, and it is completely free. It is my seven-step mixing checklist and you can download it using the link below and start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.